Chapter 39 Jaden Kensington Come with me. I feel an instant pit in my stomach like I'm in trouble. What did I do? Did they find my car stash? Excuse me, I say to Carrie, Mark, and anyone else who was listening in. An apology readies at my lips. If I can figure out what I did wrong, then I can be more specific. I get up from my spot at the table and follow after the manager of the store. I wonder if he has more nefarious ideas. My gut says there's something wrong with this guy. That I shouldn't be alone with him. But I don't have much bargaining position power here. And I don't know how much wrong is with him. I create plans of escape while watching his movements carefully. If he turns and gets too close, I can push him down the stairs. If he tries to take me to a dark corner, I will run away before he can get close enough to grab me. He leads me downstairs and along the front of the store to the entrance. Just outside of the door waits Callie, Lucas, and three others I met yesterday. I try to remember their names, but I can't even conjure up a sound for any syllable in their names. I've always sucked at remembering names. Hospital didn't check in this morning. I've tried all morning and not one peep. I want you to go check it out. He says as he lets me out. Callie takes my keys out of her pocket. I have room for three. I think she's suggesting I can go with her. I nod once hoping that was right. Callie leads the way to my car. Lucas joins us as our third. We take off, leaving the other three behind as soon as we get settled in. I sit in the back. I sigh in relief at seeing my bag is still where I left it. It's a short ride to the hospital. We leave the vehicle when we arrive. The air is chilly enough for a thin layer of snow to stick around. I need warmer clothes soon. I'll likely bundle up with layers, like an overbundled child that can't move in their snowsuit layers. On second thought, while it would keep me warm, I doubt it's very safe. So, you had a group at the hospital? I say. I am curious as to what happened after the attack. There wasn't much explained to me, not that I asked. Lucas explains. We have radio contact with a few groups in Leduc. There's another group at the Walmart and the rec center. We're supposed to check in every day, and if someone fails to check in then another group sends someone to go check on them. I make an ah sound of acknowledgement. It's good to know that all of society hasn't completely crumbled. I would have however preferred to have stumbled upon the Walmart group. There would have been more diverse goods to choose from, clothes to wear, entertainment, crafts, boots, first aid items, camping gear, bikes. Not that a food store with a pharmacy isn't good too, but there are more diverse items at the super megastore. The other people take overly long to get here seeing, as they were supposedly right behind us. Just as I'm about to get back into the car and out of the cold, they finally show up. They drive up the emergency entrance route. We half walk, half jog up the hill to catch up to them. Why didn't we park up here? They are opening the sliding glass door up when we get to the top. What kind of people are here, I wonder? It's a hospital so I assume doctors, nurses and patients. Maybe some of the police officers and firefighters from next door fled here. Did anyone check on the elementary school across the street? All those small children and half of them might not be able to find their way home. They certainly wouldn't have just let them loose as the high school did. Hopefully all the parents would have rushed straight to the school and been able to rescue their kids. The door slides open and we go inside. They have a swinging door in here that we can open. None of the lights are on. Someone whispers. Are they meaning flashlights or did the hospital have its own generator? I don't like the eerie darkness. I feel like something is going to leap out and grab me. A flash of memory comes to mind. A dream I had about a year ago. A door opens behind me. Flashlight in hand, running down a hall, around a corner, and down into a double-doored room. 
I closed the doors behind me and dropped a filing cabinet in front of it. A couple bodies ram the doors but it doesn't budge. They can't get in. I feel flighty. That could happen. I wrote it off as a nightmare but it could happen now. I suppose the scene could have played in a hospital. Note to self, run out the entrance at the first hint of something gone wrong and get Lucas and Callie to follow me out. Sorry other people, but frankly you aren't that important to my future. I've never seen any of you in any of my dreams. Flashlights turn on. Why didn't I think of grabbing one? I see the deep red-hued brown first on the floor, then outlines of dead bodies. Well, that's it then. They're dead. Too bad. Let's go. But no. The others keep walking forward. A couple checks out the bodies, then Fatima pulls a radio out from the side of one of the bodies. She fiddles with it then talks. Connor, you there? Yes, are they gone? A muffled voice calls over the radio. We found a couple dead. We are going to search the hospital for survivors. She tells him. I think that's a horrible idea. Even without the vision nagging at me, I have enough common sense to know this can't end well. Whatever attacked them could still be here. There are likely no survivors. Be safe. Radio back in one hour if you haven't finished by then. He says. Got it. She puts the radio on her belt and then orders us. Pair off, we each pick a hall and go down it. You, she points to me, are with me. Why? Why do I have to be with selfless people? I could just get this over with and tell them I'm psychic and we're all going to die if we split up and search the hospital. Shouldn't we stick together? All of us, I mean. If the thing or things that killed them are still here, we'll be easy pickings with just two people. I interject. No, it'll be faster this way. She disagrees with me. I just about give in when looks exchange between her and one of the other guys, but when she gets to the next guy he doesn't take it. She might be right. We should all search together. Are you kidding me? She makes an exasperated noise. Whatever. We'll stay together then. We're going this way. Maybe this will help. We barely leave the lobby when I heard a faint door opening. I bolt back the way we came. Four shadowed people are coming in from the outside. Look Danielle, lunch. Back, running, the way I came. I run right into Fatima. Run, I say while I pass around her. Run? I yell to the others. Pushing Lucas and Callie into moving forward, I hold on to make sure they stay with me. There is enough light down at the end to see that it is a dead end. There are screams from back where we came. I see the door for the stairs. Taking this chance of escape, I veer to the door. I open it, letting go of both Lucas and Callie in the process. I immediately go downstairs, we can make it to the parking garage. Lucas has other ideas. He grabs my arm to pull me to the other door. The parking garage is downstairs. We can loop around up here. He insists. Callie finishes whatever argument could happen. They can hear you. She grabs us and jerks us both towards downstairs. I'm happy she took my side, though I am not sure if it was because she knows I have visions or because now those people heard us and might cut off our exit. Callie leads us downstairs and through the door. I hear the door open to the upstairs as Lucas passes through this door. We hurry up and run down the hall. Between the three of us, we only have one flashlight. I try to focus and get as much information from the small spot of light, but Callie mainly keeps it on the ground. The door behind us opens. Whether I like it or not the vision is happening, but this time I have Callie and Lucas with me. Do you know where you're going? I ask. No. She responds. 
Go right. I yell. It was almost too late. The corner is upon us. I end up in the lead, from the harsher turn Callie had to make. I run us right into the same room I had gone into before. Just as everyone gets inside, I pry the filing cabinet away from the wall and drop it. Without any warning from me, I had nearly dropped it on Lucas. The filing cabinet does its job and keeps the predators out. It soon goes quiet. They stop banging on the doors. I'm content to stay here and wait them out, but I'm not the person who needs to be convinced not to go out prematurely. I watch the light spot as Callie scans the room. We are in a file room, most likely holding patients' records. There is only one way in, and one way out. Well, somehow I had escaped this room. So, now what? Callie asks directing the question at me. I don't know. I try to subtly tell her to be quiet. Drawing my finger up to my lips, then pointing to the door and finally at my ear. She gets the message. Now we wait. And wait. And wait. Every once in a while we hear a noise outside the doors. It restarts an invisible countdown. And wait. 